Hey, we should be live. Yes, we are. All right. So the Montreal Canadiens played tonight against the Columbus Blue Jackets. The game was uh, in Columbus, and I just stream just uh, kind of lagged. So sorry, we are live. The Canadiens played tonight in Columbus. Is the main. Uh, we were really damn bad. We were really really bad tonight. Uh, okay, never mind. There we go. Okay, so. Hello, my name is Harry Rice. Uh, I do Habs recaps. We played to, Never mind, there we go. Now it just went back to 30 seconds. I don't know what's going on. YouTube is weird. Hey, Tristan, I'm doing uh, pretty good. Besides the Habs, I'm doing pretty good, man. What about you? Uh, very bad starting from bullshit, Randy. Um, hey, hey, Samantha Mello, how is it going? And thank you very much for coming by. Uh, the open lines for the Canadians were Caulfield, Suzuki, Anderson, Gallagher, Dvorak, Armia, Rem Pitlick, Evans, Hoffman, and Byron, Paling, Tyler Pitlick. Uh, the defense pairings were Romanoff, sorry guys. <sighs> sorry, really. Romanoff, Savard, uh, and Harris Wyden were the defense pairings. Sam Montebo gets to start net yet again, as he's been pretty damn good in uh, replacement for Jake Allen. And Caden Primo backs him up until Terry Price is ready to go, which will probably be this weekend, is expected. Then again, it's also expected that he would potentially be in net on Monday, and he wasn't. So when Terry Price is good to go, it's when Terry Price is good to go. The opening lines for the Blue Jackets were Nightfist, Ross, Levick, Line, Vorchek, Sillinger, Benstrom. Uh, yeah, Benstrom. Uh, Kent Johnson making his NHL debut, Dan Forth and Bjorkstrand, Robertson, sorry, Robinson, Gantz, Meyer, Rorensky, Peak, uh, Grabowski, Boakfist, the better Boakfist being Adam, uh, and Jake Bean and Bl uh, Blandon, Bl 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 Blaken, Blaken, Blakenberg um, were the defense pairings. Blakenberg, Blakenberg also making, or Blankenberg also making his NHL debut tonight. So two debuts for the price of one. Uh, Elvis Merzlikens gets to start in this game. Uh, ten straight, I believe it said, ten straight games. He has started, or no, 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 sorry, he started, I think it said his sixth straight and eight of his last ten. No, he started ten straight, and he's played 12 of the last 14 or something like that since uh, March 1st for the Blue Jackets. So Krupacella backs him up because, uh, yeah, he kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm going to fix my team. And, hey, let's go. Tristan, hell yeah, let's go. Uh, Vancouver Rock, can Vancouver Giants going to make the playoffs? Hell yeah. Harry's favorite song, Enemy by Imagine Dragons. No crap. I don't like any Imagine Dragons. Actually, I'm sorry. I like one song. There's that. Uh, uh, radioactive. <laughs> radioactive. That's that's an okay one. Fajr, I did see your game got postponed because of all the snow. That kind of sucks. At least, yeah, exactly. At least one Vancouver team is able to make the playoffs. Clifford, exactly. Uh, before the game, Carey Price was expected to start the, re the weekend uh, against the Capitals. It's projected he might go Islanders or Capitals. I'd guess maybe Islanders, um, but I mean Capitals, there is the history there with Ovechkin. You know, there's a little bit of history. So I understand, but at the same time, Islanders probably wouldn't give Price that, that many shots comparatively to Washington because they play a very defensive game. But, I mean, it, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Jake Allen and Justin Barron also announced to unfortunately be out for the rest of the season. Jonathan Duran officially on LTIR. Uh, that move, actually alone sending uh, Jesse Leon back down to the AHL, which I didn't put in my notes, but I just remembered. Uh, I believe those two moves give the Canadians the salary cap space that they need to activate Carey Price. So it's it's going to happen. So I guess Price has said he's feeling close and uh Blue Jackets pushed in the opening minutes. Uh, Petrie then yelled for Monty. Ends up causing a turnover. Jackets missed the wide open net, though. Evans then gets hit hard by uh, Blankenberg. But it's a penalty because he delivers the hit instead of going to the bench as Blue Jackets were calling for the line change. Too many men against the Blue Jackets. Suzuki with some good chances, nice speed. Uh, there's a Caulfield, a good one-timer, but just misses. Hoffman then no hustle. He almost kept the puck in. Should have rushed and he would have been able to. 0 for 1 on the power play tonight for the Montreal Kings. Uh, and then the power play the other way. Uh, the other way. Uh, Blue Jackets the other way. Pressure during the power play and right afterwards. Habs were letting Roselvik walk right into the middle of the ice. It's score. Jack Roselvik off of a line A pass and a very good no look put. I want to say, I want to say it was Andrew Peak or Gravat or Grave. 
Grev, Grev, whoa, my God, Grev, Gavrikov, Gabrikov, holy shit, I am dyslexic as fuck, Grev, Gabrikov, I believe is the one who made the no look pass, uh, Nykvist was blocking Monty's view of the net, of the puck, sorry, so you couldn't, I, if he was blocking his view of the net, I'd be very concerned, but blocking Monty's view of the puck, can't blame that one on Monty, and yeah, Blue Jackets make it one nothing early on. Uh, I just realized I didn't put the actual score there, so that's actually going to be that's going to be a little bit um, ooh, iffy. I broke my foot, hand, and nose. I had a nice hockey injury. I slipped and fell into the boards. Other my teammates ran to me. Oh shit, Tristan, that that sucks, my guy. Hopefully, hopefully you're feeling better, man. Hopefully you're feeling better. Uh, <laughs> you're losing two nothing to the Avalanche, though. So, I mean, to be fair, the Kings are missing their best defenseman in Audi, so. Yeah, but Clifford, keep in mind the Kings apparently have the easiest schedule out of the NHL, out of the remainder of the NHL teams. So uh, consider the Canucks almost out. Evans gets hurt and injured way too often. Exactly, Fajo. I do feel bad for him, man. The Shifley hit, the hit tonight, thankfully, wouldn't be out of the lineup. Kind of just got back up and was like, yeah, all right, that happened. Um, but yeah, he definitely does get hit and injured way too much. I, I kind of got to feel bad for him. Like Kel Clegg, honestly. You're watching that game super closely. Hey, it, I mean, hey, Tristan, we'll see. I mean, who knows? The Avs win 7 nothing. Kings might be like, hey, yeah, no, that's not going to define us and go on this big run. If they only lose, say, 2-1, to one, that might that might decompose them more. Canucks have won four in a row. Uh, I mean, we'll see. Evening, Harry. I'm just going to go do something. Hey, Gabriel, thank you for coming by to the stream. Hope that something goes well. Uh, there's two on for the Blue Jackets afterwards. A very good save by Monty. Uh, Galley wanting a trade out of Montreal. Uh, Galley then wanting a trade out of Montreal pushes Gaunt slightly into Montembeau. That was kind of weird. Canadians were looking for some shots, but the Jackets were handedly in control. Jackets then a good shot on net by Meyer, but Monty covers. Jackets more momentum. They were looking ready. Then the Habs would go to the PK. It is Petrie for interference as Bayreuther did not have the puck when he hits him. Apparently, actually, no, yeah. Wait, why am I saying Gavin Bayreuther? He's in Seattle. Whoever had the whoever he hit didn't have the puck. Jackets with pressure. They get four shots and a post on the power play, but we kill it off. One for one on the PK tonight. Habs and look for shots. A Caulfield pass on a good shot opportunity. The first time I've seen the kid pass on a good shot opportunity, funny enough. Uh, then back the other way, Jackets pushed. Uh, and Romanoff levels Roslovic with a fucking great hit. Loved seeing that. Uh, then Roslovic on his next shift comes down uh, Savard's wing instead as Jackets pushed. Uh, there's a two on for the Jackets. Good stop by Monty. Final minute, Habs pushed with Suzuki's line, but they weren't able to find Caulfield. Suzuki then missed a shot just wide. Shots are 9-4 to four Blue Jackets and the one nothing lead after 20. Montembeau uh, robs. Uh, yeah, Tristan, I'm doing good. I'm doing good at the first and the start of the second. Nearly six minutes without a shot. Habs have finally got some, but the Jackets knew how to cover Cole Caulfield, so they were able to do that very well. Galley with a two-on-one has to take the shot himself, as I believe it was Armio with him. Canada got covered. I thought the other way with a two-on-zero, Monty makes the save. Then another three-on-zero for the Blue Jackets. They were overpassing. I put if we somehow win, it's because the Jackets beat themselves. Uh, spoiler, that wouldn't happen. Uh, Habs were not doing good. Uh, and then Hoffman with a bad pass. We were not going to win. Really? 3 nothing, and Quick's gone from the net? Really? It, well, it depends. Is it, is it the first period? Uh, Randy, why did you delete Clifford? Randy, why did you delete kill Clifford's message, my guy? Randy. Okay, so, okay, if it's the first period, then yeah, I understand. I, I thought it was like the second, but yeah, no. If it's the first period, then yeah, no, I can I can see why they why they would pull Quick then, yeah. Okay, never mind. Not, not too good. Not too good. Uh, Habs then go to the PK. Romanoff uh, gets calls for holding a blue jack. The first time was in the club. <laughs> no way, Clifford. Four, no way, 4 nothing. There's no way it's 4 nothing now. The first time, yeah, ball in the bubble. Yeah, Tanev hits, hits him. Yeah, and then Shifley. Yeah, fucking Florida where he crashes into the board. I mean, to be fair, that one wasn't a hit. 4 to fuck, bro. I, I can't wait. For, I, could, I can't say that because fucking National 66 isn't going to load on my computer probably. But thank you guys for the updates. Holy shit, this is a crazy first period. Damn. If only the Habs could come out like this. Um, I mean, uh, Tristan, we'll see if they make it 5 nothing. We'll see. Um, where am I? 
Uh, Habs were able to clear num- number 51, numeral 51, Shane Wright. I mean, hey, Crab, we'll see, my guy. Is that what Shane Wright wears, number 51? Uh, Habs cleared Jackets push, though. Line A, good, sh- good setups, but two for two on the PK tonight are the Canadians. Jackets pushed as they were in complete control. Harris then with a nice cross check on the on Benstrom, like seeing the kick running an interference penalty, pushes the puck ahead and clears it and gets it. Habs pressure at first, but Caulfield wasn't getting the shot that he wanted. And off of a turnover, it's a shorthanded chance. Paling with a great defensive play. Really nice set of wheels on that kid. He turns the Jets on, if you will, and, and is able to beat out. Uh, I want to say it was Roslovic. I don't know. I don't think so. But, um... But, yeah, uh, Paling, great defensive play. And, uh, yeah, Jackets with another chance, but Malti makes the save. Uh, that's twice they've crashed into him and no penalty. <coughs> um, uh, before I forget, Galley would actually, funny enough, do the same. Uh, Merzlikens, especially in the third, coming out of the net a few times to play the puck. Um, yeah, would come out of the, the net a few times to play the puck. It ends up backfiring once as Galley runs into him. Don't think he meant that's no goes, Jesus, Tristan. Damn, Hoffman on the back end of the power play. I agree, Kirab. I would probably move him to the right wing if we want to keep playing on the power play. I I agree with you there. There we go. Playing top six minutes typically in Montreal, so I don't know how much better he's going to get elsewhere. Uh, so, yeah, after the paling, good chance. Uh, it was then 2-0. Um, line A with a shot gets deflected by Roslovic. He has five goals in the last two games. Spoiler, he wouldn't get the hat trick. Uh, but it's just a shitty little deflection off his leg into the net. Uh don't think you can blame Monty on that one just because it's, it's a shot that's deflected in front. Yeah. Jack gets them to the power play, some momentum by us. But Mike Hoffman, very obvious slash. Two seconds left. You can probably get uh, 15th overall. I'm sorry, 16th. No, no, yeah, yeah, no. Toronto always goes out in seven. Probably about 15th overall from them, probably. But uh, Mike Hoffman uh, with the penalty and, Mike, and Patrick Kline with a few seconds left. Odd angle snaps his 10-game goalless drought and ends the power play. Uh, goalless drought of the Blue Jackets. I want to say some crazy like 30 power plays they hadn't scored. Uh, so we are two for two, uh, two for three on the PK tonight. Sorry, Habs then go to the power play. Gons gets called for slashing, uh, and we'd actually score off the faceoff uh, about 20 seconds later. Hoffman finds the puck over to Suzuki and he takes the shot deflected in by Ryan Paling. Three-one lead. That is Paling's sixth goal of the year. One for three on the power play tonight. Habs tried to push in the final minute, calling Caulfield and Ping had a few looks. Shots are 21-11 Blue Jackets, 3-1 lead into the, final, into the final 20 for them. Habs go to the power play in the first minute. I believe it was in there. No, sorry, it was tripping is the call. I don't know why I put it in Tripping was the call. Habs didn't get much. Blue Jackets with easy clears at one for four in the PP. Habs, more chances. Blue Jackets cut us off for sure. Um... Uh... Yeah, Josh Anderson then off the post for goal 101, but he's not able to find it. 3 0 Vancouver Giants are down. Ah, oh, shit, that sucks, Justin. You're the, oh, okay, you're the Canadians. Um, you're the Canadians. You just drafted right and you fleeced Edmonton for the first for their first, and it became first overall. But Mishkov has made a run for first overall. Do you A, pick safe with Bedard, risk it with Mishkov or option C? I'm going to pick safe with Connor Bernard, honestly. I'm going to really, really pick safe with Connor Bernard. Trade Hoffman to Edmonton. He'd be playing with McDavid if he can keep up. Good point on a lethal power play. Could be a decent fit. Exactly, Jacob. Not that he's really any good besides his job, which even then is kind of meh on some nights. But, uh, yeah, interesting. Interesting, Jacob. I mean, I mean, it, it could fit. Edmonton does need plus players. And they have fucking Evander Kane playing on their um, – you know, they you know, yeah, they have a Vander Kane playing on the top line. That's how desperate they are for winger depth. Hoffman won't go to any team because he will say he will improve, but we all know he won't, at least with the Canadians, try it with a better team or a team that he wants to go to. Tristan, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I don't you're making it sound like we should trade Hoffman to Vancouver for Elise Pedersen. Uh then it was four one Blue Jackets, Gold Cylinder with his thirteenth of the year. All of his goals actually have come in wins. Petrie lost his man. Of course he did because it's Jeff Petrie. That led to the goal. Habs tried to get shots. Jackets were in control. Rossovic gets stopped by Monty uh, looking for the hat trick. Canadians uh, were just trying to get out of their own zone, but Jackets were turning it over. Habs actually, funny enough, caused a few turnovers, but were not able to get shots. Uh, big surprise, Suzuki's line was our best, no doubt. Blue Jackets forced a turnover. Nightfish shot, but Monty holds. 
Uh, and then a few minutes later, it's 5-1 in Yul Benstrom with about two minutes left. Final shots. Um, offense the next make a mess up and hard. That was an actual player, so the pick was valid, but he does good in his ones. Ones? Jacob, yeah, Petrie was really slow tonight. I, I did not like Jeff Petrie's game tonight at all. I was not a fan of Jeff Petrie, and I, I just didn't like what Jeff Petrie has done lately. Sure, he's getting points somewhat, but he's definitely slowed down tonight. I think he's slow. And, you know, the, the commentators brought up a really, really good point. This is a game that you have to wonder where the veterans showed up. Where was Petrie? Where was Gallagher? Where was Hoffman? Where was Armia? Where was Byron? Where was Savard? Where were these guys? You know, where were these guys that are supposed to step up? You know, because you can't just expect, you know, oh, Suzuki, Caulfield, Rem Pitlick, you know, Jordan Harris. These guys are going to do everything, you know. Eventually, we'll get to that point. Yes, eventually the expectation will be that Caulfield, Rem Pitlick, you know, Jordan Harris. These guys are going to do everything, you know. Eventually, we'll get to that point. Yes, eventually the expectation will be that they'll be able to do not anything but a lot. But it's just um, – okay, never mind. We're, we're frozen now. But, uh, you know, I, I, I just feel like – fuck, what was I saying? What was I saying, boys? I'm dumb. What was I saying? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, yeah. He – oh, he does get in his first season, puts up 35 goals, actually wins the Calder. But then you pay him 11 mil by seven, and he ends up busting – well, Bernard and Mishkov become the next Lemieux. He got fired. Ah, uh, damn, Fazer. I'm glad I didn't pick option C then. Petrie, Hoffman, Gallagher, Armia need to go this summer. Crab, I would agree. I, I, I would agree. Petrie, Hoffman, Gallagher, Armia need to go this summer. Yeah, definitely. Get rid of Petrie's contract. Trade him to Philly or something. Hoffman, trade him to Edmonton. Galley, I don't know where you could trade him. I don't know. We're a good fit. I don't know why. I see Galley to Columbus being actually a pretty good fit. And then Armia, if you can just trade him to, to Jersey or something. So, yeah. Didn't watch the game. Who are the top three that showed up? Uh, Suzuki, Caulfield, and Anderson. <laughs> Probably Randy. Probably Suzuki, Caulfield, Anderson. Which even then, Anderson didn't do all that much. I honestly don't think the pack of Jacob. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Exactly. I, I I think, yeah, season's over. Third two goalies are starter. Exactly. Like, once... Once Terry Price comes back, which should be... Um, on uh, either next game or the, literally the game right after because it's back to back. Uh, it should be a spark. It should be like, hey, yo, now, yo, price is back. Let's not disappoint him. Let's go out fucking 40 shots, eight goals somehow. It's, um, yeah. <coughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's definitely going to be a spark. Paling, I say, yes, Krabby, yes, exactly. Paling, I believe, was on the line permanent, not permanently, but was on that line with Hoffman, I believe. Uh, no, I believe there were some line changing, but they did, they were playing on the line. So yeah, whenever they were on the line together, yeah, Paling was very, very much, uh, recovering for Hoffman. You were talking about players, but, uh, yeah, if we're going, if we're including tenders then, uh, then yeah, probably Suzuki, Caulfield, Monty then, those guys showed up. Uh, in order of effectiveness, I'd say Suzuki, just because he got a point, and then Monty, then Caulfield, because Caulfield had a few good chances. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, like if we're including goaltenders, then Monty. If we're going just players, then Suzuki, Caulfield, and Anderson. Hoffman is my number one to trade. Never liked that signing. I actually did like the signing because he is a consistent, uh, before this year, a pretty consistent 30, 30 goal scorer, 30 assist guy. I did like the signing at first. But, yeah, it's just it's kind of not worked out in Montreal. Funny enough, Hoffman is, like, one of two guys that I think worked more and played better under Dominic Ducharme than uh, Marty St. Louis, funny enough. Funny enough. So, yeah. Uh, so the final shots are 31-21 Blue Jackets, and they would win 5-1 to one in regulation. So, yeah, guys, that is, like usual, going to do it for the recap. Funny enough, feel that Hoffman bounced around the league. Well, I mean, he was, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Randy. I mean, he started, what, in Ottawa, played a couple years there. Played a couple years there. I think, like, five, six years there. Went to Florida after getting traded from San Jose, I'm pretty sure. Florida, then I want to say St. Louis and then Montreal. He, he hasn't bounced around like too, 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 too much. Actually, let me – I don't care. Fucking stream's lagging. Let me look up on uh, HockeyDB real quick. Let me look up on uh, HockeyDB what Mike Hoffman's careers look like. 
Uh, yes, born 1989. Yes, I want the good Mike Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he started his career in Ottawa. Yeah, he hasn't bounced around at all that much. Uh, started in Ottawa, played there for six years, plays two years in, in Florida, then goes to Seattle, St. Uh, St. Lo- St. Louis, plays one season there. And now he's played one season in Montreal. So yeah, he hasn't really bounced around like all like a lot. Last five years, yeah, sure, he's bounced around quite a bit. But like he like over his career, he hasn't really bounced around all that much. Uh, at least in my opinion. Like, see, and like even looking at it, he's a consistent 20 goal scorer. Um up until last year, which even then he would have probably hit 20, maybe even 30, uh, if it was a full season, because he had 17 with the St. Louis Blues. Uh, but he is a consistent 20 goal scorer who has uh, who's had, uh, sorry, yeah, he's a consistent 20 goal scorer, 30 point scorer, roughly 50, 60 points. I thought it was actually a pretty, pretty good signing at first. So, yeah, uh, that yeah, that back check by Paling on the power play, that was a beautiful one. That was of your players to the Canucks. If so, who or what do you want? I'd give Galley because he's from Vancouver. Uh, we'll trade Hoffman there too because we know they need goal scoring. We'll take a first round pick back and uh, one of your prospects. Trade Hoffman to Arizona. Crab. We want to get rid of him, not fucking banish him to hell. He said 30 goals. Well, I mean, technically he is a 30-goal scorer, Randy, because he has had one 30-goal season. And here's the thing. Technically, could have had uh, three more because here's the thing. In 14-15, he plays 79 games, 27 goals. Probably doesn't score three goals in the three games he missed, but you never know. In 15-16, 29 goals, plays 78 games in the four games that he uh, does not play. I want to say due to injury probably gets one goal more than likely uh and then 1920 in 69 nice games has 29 goals he plays those 13 more games there's no doubt he gets at least one goal no doubt so he 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 is a guy who has uh upper of uh upper 20 goal score near 30 goal score you know so like sure randy oh i said 30 goal score 20 goal scores can be found anywhere else can they really be though can they really be found anywhere else because Mike Hoffman is a 20-goal scorer. Keep in mind, he played his two years in, in Florida on their top line, I want to say, if not in their top six. Ottawa, a lot of his time, was on their second, third line, sometimes on their first. So the fact he was scoring 20 goals there shows he probably could have been a 30-goal scorer. And St. Louis, in, with his 17 goals last year, playing, I believe, on their third line most of the year. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Tristan, no, I don't think we're going to rate anybody today. Yeah, I've really liked Leon and actually Jacob. If if we were to trade a Hoffman this summer, which I do think we we might end up doing, uh, I would definitely like to, uh, Leon and like to see Jesse Leon play. End of the first Avalanche up four nothing. Thank you, Tristan. I appreciate it, my guy. Um, so Nick Suzuki leads the Canadians with nineteen goals, thirty seven assists, fifty six points. Cole Caulfield eighteen goals, twenty one assists, thirty nine points. Rem Pillick with 13 goals, 18 assists, 31 points. Josh Anderson has 18, sorry, 18 goals, 10 assists, 28 points. Arturi Lekkonen, who is no longer with the Canadians, and Mike Hoffman each have 12 goals, 16 assists, 28 points. Chris Weidman has four goals, 21 assists, 25 points. Uh, Jake Evans, 10 goals, 13 assists, 23 points. Tyler DeFoley, who's no longer with the Montreal Canadiens, has nine goals, four assists. Sorry, nine goals, 14 assists, 23 points. Uh... Bob coming in with more retarded takes. Montemo's not good. He needs to go. Can't blame him on any of the goals. My guy, maybe that fifth one, but even then, you kind of got to blame my, um, you kind of got to blame, uh, you kind of got to blame the offense for not showing up. He just said 20. Randy, no, I didn't say 20 goal scores are hard to come by. I'm saying, can you really find 20 goal scores anywhere? You know, like look at our team, Suzuki Caulfield and ha- and Anderson, 10 games left. Should be able to hit 20 goals. Should be able to. Anderson, I feel like might not be able, not, might not. Uh, Pillick, if he's playing the whole year, probably is hits 20 goals. We have 20 goal scorers. Here's the thing. Can you find them anywhere though? Can you find? A, can you look in a team's depth and think, hey, this guy has the potential. Put him with the right guys, and he's a 20 goal scorer. Some guys, yes. Can you pluck someone completely? Not like some AHL bum, you know, or whatever. Not some NHL bum, but for example, some guy who's on a third, fourth line role, not getting too much, um, not getting too much ice time. Turn him into a twenty goal scorer with the right development of the right team, probably. But you can't find twenty goal scores just absolutely anywhere. Are they hard to come by? Not really? Are they easy to come by? Equally no, because you have to make sure 
even if they're a 20-goal scorer elsewhere, you have to make sure they do fit with the system with Hoffman. It honestly did look like he would fit into the system <clears throat> until you see the system that Bishar was employing. Um, you know, so for me, I don't I don't think 20 goal scores. I'm not saying 20 goal scores are hard to come by, Randy. You're putting words in my mouth. I'm saying they're not as easy to come by as you say they are, you know. Uh, but Hoffman will be traded because of his play off the puck, because of the turnovers that he's uh, putting. I'm not saying 20 goal scores are hard to come by, but A, even if I was saying that, we have our 20 goal scores. We have guys who are going to score 20 goals for us. We can move the 12 with Mike Hoffman and replace those goals even if 20 goal scores were hard to come by. Uh, Hoffman, Drouin, and Montembeau need to hit the road. I mean, Bob, you can keep saying that. I'll agree with you on Hoffman, Drouin, Nope, and Montembeau. I guess if hit the road means is in turn go to the AHL, I guess technically yes, because Price and Allen should maybe be the tandem next year. I don't see how Montembeau clears waivers, though, but, I mean, hey, we'll see. That's nice to know, Tristan. Thank you. I have Cole Caulfield on manager for franchise team. He's 34 points in 15 games. That sounds like Cole Caulfield to me. Uh, where was I? Uh, Toffoli, I think, was where I stopped. Dvorak. Christian Dvorak has 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points. Jonathan Druin, who's unfortunately out for the rest of the year, had 6 goals, 14 assists, 20 points. Brendan Gallagher has 6 goals, 13 assists, 19 points. Interestingly, interestingly has played about 20 more games than uh, Jonathan Druin, and it's taken him this long to hit. Uh, near, uh, ben Schrott, who's no longer a Montreal Canadian, had 7 goals, 9 assists, 16 points. Jeff Petrie has four goals, 12 assists, 16 points. Ryan Paling, Jesus Christ. Ryan Paling, uh, very nice. Six goals, nine assists, 15 points. David Savard has three goals, 10 assists, 13 points. Uh, Yoel Armia, six goals, six assists, 12 points. Canadian had two goals, 10 assists, 12 points. Laurent Dauphin has, has four goals, seven assists, 11 points. Alexander Romanoff with a very nice three goals, six assists, nine points. Michael Pozzetta, five goals, three assists, eight points. Paul Byron, three goals, four assists, seven points. Corey Sherman with two goals, five assists, seven points. At your pro, you're lagging. Uh, Jesse Leon and Cal, Clegg, Cal Clegg each have two goals, three assists, five points. I was playing NHL 9 on easy. Yes, yeah, Clifford, yeah. Apparently, it seems like uh, it seems like if you play NHL 09 or like some of those early, I guess, next-gen games uh, on like really easy modes, it seems like they, they, uh, they go really, really weird. They, they – the players just – it's its weird. And, yeah, Daniel Sedin in, like, 15 games with 100 points. Yeah, that's that's strange. And I'm very happy for my Sim League that we went right to NHL 10 and did two years in that game. I'm really happy NHL 09 does not have season mode then. Um, game play, yeah, all right. So Sammy Niku has uh, – who currently in the AHL has five assists. Joel Edmondson has two goals, one assist, three points. Justin Barron, who is currently in the – sorry, who's currently out for the rest of the season, had one goal, one assist, two points. Cedric Paquette, uh, who's in the AHL, has two assists. Lucas Vanamo and Raphael Arvid Penard each have a goal. Adam Brooks, who is no longer with the, who is no longer with the Montreal Canadiens, and Tyler Pralick each have one assist. Uh, the fights, Michael Pozzetta, Chris Weidman each have four. Josh Anderson and Alexander Romanoff have three. Brendan Gallagher has two. And Laurent Dauphin and Brett Kulak each have one each. Happy I missed this game. Went to go see Sonic 2. It was a banger. Hey, let's go. Let's go, Lucas. I'm glad you enjoyed your time out at Sonic 2. That is that is nice to hear, my guy. Hell yeah. So, yeah, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Harris. Uh, sorry, my name is Harris. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, favorite, share, on everything that includes. But it's not limited to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and everything else. My name is Harris. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to YouTube. YouTube. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the Puff Club. Subscribe to subscribe to the Nation if you're a member of the Mod Squad. Thank you for moderating any comments or any streams, and or streams and or any videos that is much greatly appreciated. Uh, like always, six nothing Seattle. Bad damn Tristan, that sucks. Like, <coughs> the description of the Amazon versus the PO Box and the PayPal. The I, I was, sorry. The Amazon versus the PO Box, the PayPal, the Discord, the Twitch, the Letterbox, and the speed running account are all in the description below. Uh, during the summer, boys, I'm going to have some more videos coming out. I have a really, really cool idea. Might start on it tonight. I don't know yet. But uh, I had a very interesting idea for... I had a very interesting idea for... Um, I had a very interesting idea for the... Uh, for videos that we do. And if I can do... Uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what I do in the off season. I'm hoping to get some more gaming videos, out, especially with the new computer on the rise. Uh, getting some totally legitimate copies of video games that I 
that I that I don't own yet, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, hopefully that leads to me being able to do some really cool videos because I'd love to do those for you guys. Yeah, guys, that's gonna do it again. My name is Harris, and I am out. Stay classy, boys. I'm running out, and always remember, no matter, no matter how bad we are like this or how good we are like last year, go Habs, go baby. Thank you so much. Very much appreciate it. Love you guys. Respect one another. Love one another. Love you guys so much. My name is Harris again, and I, and I'll see you guys.